What a spread! Look at this! Look at this! I have set the table. I'm doing my little afternoon orchid potpourri barbecue. How's that? So I've got sand here on the left, small lava rock in the middle, ceramics, and food containers. And the main ingredients are Rapiculus lelias and or similar, but 99% are the Rapiculus lelias that have recently arrived from Brazil and from Germany. Mingi mingi kazi. That is Swahili for a lot, a lot of work. But it is a beautiful, hot Indian summer afternoon. That's why I am on the east side because working with these now it's far too hot where i normally am so let's hope that i can keep this in focus and having said all that thank you so much for joining me as there will be a lot of repeat in this video i am just going to quickly explain what i'm up against and what i will be doing and that is cleaning off dead roots if there are no live roots, if I have nothing to anchor, the dead roots stay on. And as an aid to help me anchor the orchid, I will not be taking off any old back bulbs if they don't come off naturally. So they're going to stay. They're going to look a little bit scruffy in the beginning, but uh, it's better to have them as storage and then at a later stage take them off. And I shall be seeing if there are any divisions that I can pot up separately because I have two different sizes of orchids. And for that reason, I don't have the opportunity to use my standard pots. And I bought myself some square ones. Everything has been drilled with a semi-hydro setup holes. And I think that's enough jibber jabber. I think I need to get a move on. So welcome, thank you for joining me. Let's see what we're up against. So my plan is to clean them up, obviously. And after I've cleaned them up, I will do like an assembly line of all the potting up materials and the pots, and then pot them all up into relevant pots. Since they've arrived, which has been a while. I have not had much opportunity to do anything with them because I first needed to see how much strength have they got. And it was pretty bad. Some of them were really bad, like this little Lelia gracilis that when I unboxed it, I thought it was Lelia 8. <laughs> but um, she was really, really sad. And I didn't think she would make it. So over the last weeks, literally, I've been soaking them at night and letting them dry out during the day just to see if the leaves would at least plump up and give me energy to be able to pot them up. Because I can assure you that potting up a weak orchid and you can't soak the entire orchid, especially if it's little like this, the sprays that I am so accustomed to doing in the summer, it's not possible to do that this time of year. Okay, granted, it is a hot day today, but we're gonna have swings and roundabouts weather-wise, and that doesn't always guarantee that I can spray them from the top. So that's all I've been doing, literally. I've had lots of yogurt buckets, that had had water in according to a certain level and every night they would go in. This one was almost completely submerged. And in the morning I would pull them out and let them dry. So this little Gracilis has plumped up quite a bit and I'm really pleased about that. But uh, it has had signs of scale that is concerning. I don't see any now. Nothing I can see here in the past weeks shows me that there's still an infestation. But the, sh the sad thing about this is that the leaves are damaged. And uh, I hope that they can gather up strength to keep going. 
and sustain the plant. Anyway, I'm going to continue on with my little chore here. And if I see anything, discover anything of interest, of course, I'll stop the video. Having said that, this is a piece of the gracilis that came off with the entire orchid when I unboxed it. It had two dried leaves, but you can see that this piece, there is nothing left which is a shame, even the new growth it tried, all that went to the point of no return in transportation. So yeah, I'm going to pick away, peel away, clean away, and then I'll get back to you in a little while. So I have done the cleanup of all of these nine. I took all the other ones out of their pots, cleaned them up. And I just wanted to show you that the Diana has some good roots. So she's going to be okay. And what I could see before cleaning her up were, was this nubbin coming out. And I thought this is the right time to be doing it. 
And then when I took her out of the pot, she had a little bit more white to play with, which is great. So Diana is good to go. Now I have one little thing that is working against me at this point, and that is the light. Not that it's late in the afternoon now, but it just got all cloudy. So that is going to make my filming a little bit more complicated as far as I'm concerned. So I will continue with this in the morning. Now, here is my Enspezii. And I was cleaning her up and was explaining why I'm not taking all this bark off. That's because she is absolutely accustomed to some organic media and where they live, they always have organic media around their roots. So that's why I enjoy these little guys because I don't have to fuss with them. And then I was also mentioning that I want to have more of her sheaths off because she is very, very compact. I don't know what's tucked away in her. And that is something I need to take care of. So she's going to soak overnight as well. And then tomorrow I'll be a little bit more aggressive with regards to taking off the sheaths, making sure that the back here it's clean. I don't want any resident things to come from South America that is not supposed to be in this country. That would not be a good idea. So. I have not treated her with hydrogen peroxide. They haven't looked anything scary or dubious since they've arrived. They've been soaking and I've been watching them. So bit by bit, as you can see as I talk, I'm peeling the sheaths off. And then tomorrow, I'll just do a little bit more and see what comes off during the overnight soak. So what I'm soaking them with is my calcium magnesium at 300 ppm and with two tablespoons of, that's US tablespoons of kelp max to give them a little bit more, another boost before they are settled in tomorrow. Make sure that I don't cover anything that's not supposed to be covered, like is that a new growth? Will it be okay overnight? These little things need to be considered. If I'm dubious, I just lean her one way and then that'll be okay. Or tip out the water. There we go. Here is Lucasiana. This is the cool to cold grower that we had when I was unboxing. I wasn't sure which one it was. I did put it up on text but never know if somebody saw that. So in this case, Lucasiana is my cool to cold grow, which is great because this is the time of year then to get them acclimatized and established. And uh, then we can see how she behaves in the summer. So with her, I had no issues getting her out of the pot. She was like ready to go out of that pot. She was loose and I will not be removing any media but I will tomorrow be working a little bit more on the sheaths before I pot her up as well. A good strong plant I don't see like I'm gonna have any problems with her whatsoever and the, the new roots are a little bit bruised at the end but that's okay there's enough strength in her to push out more so that is my Lucas Younger or Lelia Long Gip or Lelia Long Gip Long Gip or Long Gipes. Either way, she's cute. So in she goes. Let's see what else comes off tomorrow with the rats to bark. And then here's my little Cerula, Sincorana variety Cerula. Very pleased about this little one. Looking absolutely amazing. I took off some of the sheaths, they were pretty easy. I'm not messing with the bark that's there. She is a cutie. And she was also quite pricey, but I can see now I have a super strong, healthy little 
St. Corana. And let's help her open her leaf. There we go. And she doesn't have to exude the energy in trying to unstick herself there. So, St. Corana variety Cerula. The little treasure there. And make sure that she gets her midnight snack. Well, evening soak snack so that there is room and strength tomorrow for what's to come. Very, very excited about these Lelias from Groß Rechner Orchideen. Very, very excited. They're awesome. Now, I'm going to fill up just to the whole level all the nutrient solution for the remaining Lelias. These are not their forever pots. I have decided some will go into bigger pots, but for the overnight soak, this is going to do too much because she's getting new growths. Too much. Yeah, that's all we need. We don't need to overdo it. Now I'm getting to know these as well now because they've soaked with me for so long. If there's a bit too much, I err on the side of caution and lower the water level. Regentii has split into four pieces when I cleaned her up. I don't know if that was obvious, but uh, getting new growth, and we'll look at that shortly when the video goes to the potting up as well. Unfortunately, those four pieces are a bit of a concern Two at least are concerning. And then here is my little Gracilis. This is this one where had, you can see it had a pest infestation. It is not clean on the leaves. It is now. I mean, I have clean leaves, but you can see the damage. And on little structures like this, that damage is the killer. That'll take them out. They have nothing to reserve on. She has barely any roots to speak of. And if there is one, I have to be super careful with it. So this is all scale damage. In the last weeks since she's been soaking with me overnight, I have not seen any more scale. But for this one, it is concerning. Now, Gracilis is considered a rare Rupiculus. And that is probably why, because she is so tiny and so susceptible and she can just keel over at a moment's notice. But I want to show you something that has happened in the past weeks since she's been soaking in and out. She has a new growth coming there and something else new growth wise there. So this is my got to get this piece going piece. So that's only just happened in the last weeks since the unboxing. And I'd like to keep it that way. I'd like to make sure that she makes it. So we can take that away. And then Itambana also had scale. She also had some very dry woody bits at the end. So you can see the damage. She had some extremely dry, woody, pseudobulb, almost cork-like, it's, it's astounding, which I took out. And I'm sure there's two here, but I'm not separating them. I'm just gonna leave her like this and hope for the best. I have seen a slight improvement on the leaves. It looked like they've plumped up a bit. It looks like they are a little bit more substantial, a little bit more shiny, like there's a bit of something them. So Itambana, in your little pot you go. There is no new growth or anything. Yes, there is on that one side. So lay her down on the other side. Label goes in. And this is where they will live for now. At least they are clean. They are going to be hydrated. And then shortly we will do the conveyor belt of potting up, and then I shall explain why I'm doing what I'm doing. 
Okay, I'm back. <laughs> not quite good morning, I would like to say. Good morning, but it's not. I had the hiccups all morning, <laughs> so that wasn't going to be very useful for filming. <laughs> um, they're gone now, I hope, because I need to get on with this. I wanted to show you, before planting them all up, I wanted to show you my sangiloba, which overnight I actually turned upside down so that the leaves soaked in the CalMag and seaweed solution. But I just wanted to show you what we're going to be looking for in future once she's potted up and hopefully recovering. You can see how the leaves are so wrinkled and they're actually curling in and upon themselves. Yeah, that's what we want to correct. Hopefully, when she settles down and gets new roots. Now, all of these I have also treated with lemon water. The ones that had markings. So some of the leaves have cleaned up nicely. Some may need a second treatment. But the ones that came from Großrechner Oshidin did not need any kind of lemon water treatment. It was mainly the ones from Floralia. But you can see these roots are all dead, but she is already growing one, two, and three, right there, yeah, three new growths. And there's root stubs, nubbins coming. So let's get her in a pot and let's get the, these leaves to correct themselves and not look so dehydrated. So that's one thing I wanted to show you, that she was upside down overnight. And another thing I wanted to show you that I noticed yesterday, and I was working without sound. Let me see. I don't want to do any damage, but I do want to show you the Regentii. So she fell into four pieces when I was cleaning her up. Some of the back bulbs were very woody and I took those off. They came off easily. So what I'm going to do is pot her up two separate ways in two different pots. Grow her on to strength and then maybe she can make somebody else happy at some point. But there are little root nubbins growing now and all I need to make sure is to stabilize her in the pot. Okay, got the work cut out for us. I will be potting up two and showing you what I'm doing and then I'll just roll on through and get the rest done. So let's start with the a little one first. Let me get a little plate out just to help me along. Let's start with Lelia gracilis. Seeing as she is one of my weakest ones, and I want to stop fretting about her. There's the two new growths. So we'll just keep that in mind when we're potting it up. Honestly, there is no need for the back. In some of these, there's no need to be potting up in the back because they grow out in wherever they come. They, most of them do not have a back and front direction of growth. They start to zigzag in and upon each other. I always start with Ceramis in this case, when it comes to Rapiculus Lelias. And I fill the Ceramis because it's got the highest potential of wicking. I fill it up all the way to the holes that were drilled for the semi-hydro. So there's that. And then I go with small lava rock. Trying to keep it in my hand and not dropping it everywhere. Picking up is a little bit complicated. So then I make a layer of small lava rock, which is also followed by another layer of ceramics.
And then where I suspect the roots to go, I'm gonna add a little bit of sand. Now this sand will pour through eventually down into the reservoir. But for the early stages, there is something around the roots that also has a little bit of silica in it. And the orchid can then have a little bit more water retention as well. There's a little new growth over there. Those are the two growths over there. I'm sorry you can't see much maybe because my hand is covering everything. But um, this orchid is so small. Maybe not the best example either. Next up, another little layer of ceramis around the roots. And as these roots are not viable, they only serve the anchoring purpose. That is all. And then, in this case, I'm pulling her up a little bit because I have some new growths I want to take care of because, next up, lava rock. Now she already feels quite firm in the pot. The pieces are too big based on the orchid. This is small lava rock. Can you believe how tiny she is? Then I do become a little bit more selective about it and make sure that I only have small pieces around the top. So I don't need to worry about supporting her in any, in any way. Where she lives, there will be no breeze, nothing to interfere with her growing potential. I don't, she's not exposed in any way, shape or form. It's gonna go under the table with all the others. And then we'll see if I have still got some space left under the table because maybe there's room for some more. <laughs> Easy. All right, so there's that. Pretty much I fill up all the way around with lava rock. But in this case, because she is so small, I'm gonna hold off so that I can keep an eye on what she's doing, especially when it comes either to root growth or the like. So in my case here now, this is all I'm going to do so that I can watch what's happening on the surface with the new growths that are showing themselves already. And yes, it is a bit of a fandangle maneuvering, but only at the start. Once these guys take off, that's exactly what they do. They take off. They have been soaking, as I mentioned, all night. This is pure RO water. This is now just to water them in and leave her be. She has been through enough. Let's prop that side up a little bit with some more lava rock. And for now, the layers she is touching, they are wet. Afterwards, I'm gonna pour pure RO water all the way to fill the reservoir. This is just to protect any roots from desiccating. Even though they're not viable, there were some that still were greening up. So that's just to protect her. Check my little holes, and in she goes. That's one. We will now move on to a bigger one. Let's go with Enfeld CI. So I've been thinking of what I'm going to do with this one overnight, whether I'm going to fiddle any more with her structures in here that I don't like to see so bulked up and I don't have any insights into what is going on. But I was also thinking enough already. 
get them in the ground. Did quite a bit of a sheath cleanup, so there's no need to be more persistent about it as she continues peeling. But I think that she is ready and good to go into the ground. Let's take off these old spikes. Right. And for her, I have planned, the big ones are getting these big square pots. Because by their, judging by their size, you can see that the proportion is going to work out really well. She has two directions of growth. So she's going to bulk up on both sides. So I don't really see a predominant back and a predominant front. So she's going into the middle. With the big guys, I'm a little bit more conservative on the ceramics because the roots are bigger, stronger, they'll get down faster. They get lava rock at the bottom. And then I start to fill up with ceramics just by the level of the holes because that is where the major amount of wicking will start. So there's that growth and that growth. And that's all I'm going to do. No sand in this case, because she's quite big, quite vigorous. and the lava rock is pushing her in a direction that I'd want to control. So make sure I'm gonna get her on both sides so that she doesn't shift in the pot away from where I want her. Okay, now we can start to shake and lift up. And then I'm going to start with the ceramics in between before I shake and lift up again. This way I've got the ceramics already dispersing into the lava rock. There we go. That is looking all right. And then we pour lava rock around one more time. and a little sand, just to fill in the, some of the crevices, some of the gaps. I do this for new Rapiculus Lelias that come into my collection. I do this every six months, because what's been on the surface will then just dissipate into the base of the pot by waterings and all that. So I just do it twice a, twice a year for new Rapiculus Lelias, and then I don't do any more of that because then they're already established. You can see how the sand fills in already. There won't be much left on the top. Now a point to note, if I had an issue with roots, the fact that there are roots growing and I don't want to jiggle the orchid around too much, then I would obviously, well, for me, I already put the label in in advance, like halfway through the potting. But in this case, the roots are still where she is. I have no issues with being a bit pushy and aggressive with my label. But sometimes if the roots are delicate, then I actually put the label in halfway before filling up and around her again. So that's two down, seven to go.
smaller, longer than I expected. And one thing I did not expect was to run out of small lava rock. And uh, I had to open a new bag of ceramics to be able to continue. That, that was very surprising. I thought I had enough material to fill up all of them with everything I need without having to add more. But hey ho, so be it. So I ran out of the small lava rock and instead I improvised with my Regentii. They have terrarium grit in them. And then this little lava rock here is to hold it upright. And I had terrarium grip back from when in the day I thought I could do some succulent growing, something from South Africa. That didn't work out. I am useless. So that was left over, but now it has found its purpose. And yeah, I have propped up the Sangilobia. She is extremely wobbly in my conveyor belt work method. I have actually found myself to forget my support if need be. So once I had her potted up, I basically thought, oh no, I'm not gonna undo all that again. So I made a little thing of lava rock and I think I knocked a th the third tiny new growth off. I think, I can't see it anymore. So maybe I knocked that off when I was putting the lava rock in. Oh well. Collateral damage, as you have with the orchid hobby. So these little guys are now going to go under the table with their compadres. And let's hope for the best. This may have been quite the long video, but I think it would be, it wouldn't be right if I didn't do one comprehensive repotting or potting up video of Rapiculus Lelia, seeing as I am so in love with them and I have so many. So if there are ever any questions in the future, I can always reference this one. Um, and I hope that it wasn't too boring or too tedious. However, if you've made it this far and stuck with me, thank you so very, very much. I really appreciate it. This is not everybody's cup of tea, I would say. These are somewhat, you know, they call them specialized. And for me, I don't see them specialized, but um, yeah, so if you stayed here, thank you so very, very much. If you have any questions, please fire away in the comments below. If you have any observations that you think how I can improve it, then also please let me know. This is not me saying how it's best to do it. This is how I have been successful in growing these who are supposedly notoriously difficult to keep and cultivate in, uh, in a collection, so to speak. And I hope this was helpful. I hope it was interesting. Again, any suggestions, any comments, any observations, any questions, fire away in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to oblige and hear and learn as well. Thank you so very, very much for watching. As always, I really, really appreciate it. And I hope that you have a wonderful day. Stay safe, take care, bye.